Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at the comic Nosebleed put out by Reptile House Comics. This is written and drawn by Derek Jones. Um, Reptile House does some really cool anthologies and this book is no different than their anthologies in terms of the quality content. Also they have like this cool silver ink that I've seen them use on their products before that they have on this, this cover. And then on the inside, you have a bunch of really, really well drawn, uh, really well written, like interesting story. This doesn't have like a number on it, like this is number one, but I get the sense that this is part of a larger story. So I hope we'll get to see Nosebleed number two. The book starts out with this image here that kind of looks like a really good Paul Pope drawing of a pile of trash. I really like that graphic. And then you go right into the the scenario here where these bullies are picking on these two kids and one of them starts to do like, you know, the psychic head burst thing. We have Reggie and Tilda who are getting picked on and um, they like seem to be using some kind of psychic power here. Both of them are concentrating really hard and the main bully, Brett's head swells up and explodes. And you get these really awesome, gnarly drawings of this guy's head mutating and swelling and then popping. It's beautiful, beautiful pen and ink work, brush and ink work um, with this second tone on it. Totally nasty. It's it's definitely a gross book, but it's it's also a, like a compelling, almost like a fire starter, Stephen King fire starter type of story where you have these these kids, um, the outsider kids being picked on that have this kind of superpower. That's basically the theme of the book. You see this ball of trash later on that's in the front cover. Really awesome drawing there. It's definitely some Paul Pope vibes, but this is the characters using their powers to pile up a ball of trash and drop them on people that are impacting them, uh, picking on them. And again, you just get to see the really, really nice art that's all throughout the book. So that, that's pretty much what this book is, these kids learning some. they And you go back in time a little bit and learn how they got these powers, looking at some occult witchcraft stuff. Some other cool imagery in the book, like I really like this one here, where this kid runs his bike into a railing, and the bam, like, flat flattens right up against, like, the invisible wall of where the railing is at. I like that. Like, all of that stopped, and this kid keeps flying. I, I don't think I've ever seen that trick with lettering before, but it really, really gets a, uh, across that idea of hitting a barrier and then going forward and accentuates the most, and really nice. A lot of the art in here also reminds me of Chris Somney, uh, who works with Robert Kirkman, did a lot of stuff for Marvel. Somehow he draws the backgrounds in this book. It reminds me of someone like Chris Somney. There, there's a lot of other artists that have this vibe, but that or Michael Walsh is another artist I think of that does some horror books. Uh, so these, th there's kind of like some stylistic things I pick up on in there. All artists I really like and all stylistic tricks that are, tick, ticks, not tricks, that are used very well in this book. And towards the end of the book, you get some other characters showing up. And this is why I feel like it's part of a larger story. You have like this plane crash deeper in the woods. And in the plane, they're finding these like pills or seeds that the kids have been taking that are helping give them these psychic powers. And you have this character show up and they refer to him as an esper and he's, or an ESP or um, someone who uses ESP and psychic abilities. And that seems to be tied to these pills or giving him the power, but he has like the swollen veiny forehead, kind of like the kids do. So you get the sense that these kids then are taking some pills that got released into the wild when this plane crash happened. And now this guy's there to clean up and you see he's encountering the kids and they're, they're taking one of these pills. Uh, but the story doesn't really resolve in a way that feels fully resolved. I mean, there is like an ending to the issue, but it feels like a much wider world that's opening up with this Esper guy getting introduced right in the last few pages and this broader kind of conspiracy going on. Um, so I really, really hope that there is maybe, I don't know if it's going to be called Nosebleed 2 or if there's uh, you know, a different title, but it will be a continuation of the story. But I really love the art in this. It's a really fun, engaging story. So I hope there is a, a second, third, fourth book of these because I really enjoy what Derek Jones is doing in, in Nosebleed. 
Um, so definitely check this out. Uh, hit up Reptile Comics and get yourself a copy. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a, this gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the, the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future that really the sci-fi dystopians backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sh Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color in there that's going to look really, really beautiful and has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is going to be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart.